In this video you will learn Servant leadership principles and traits What is the difference between traditional leadership and servant leadership? What constitutes servant leadership in real life? How to be a servant first leader? Robert K. Greenleaf originated the phrase servant leader in his 1970 article The Servant as Leader. Servant leadership is a style of leadership founded on the premise that leaders put the greater good first. Leaders with this approach prioritize their team and organization. They do not prioritize their own goals. Employees who work in a servant leadership setting are more likely to feel hurt. This increases their likelihood of working to the utmost of their skills by 4.6 times. As a result, workers may learn and develop while also contributing their own knowledge and vision. Instead of employing control and sometimes toxic leadership approaches, this is based on increasing influence and authority. Employees are empowered under servant leadership. However, the leader does not just vanish. The servant leader is concerned with creating the organization's strategic vision and expressing it to the team, encourage team ownership and extended supported trust, ensuring that the team possesses the necessary resources, finances, abilities and focus to make a difference, creating a foundation through which their team may thrive. Bottom-up empowerment. This entails increasing team members' self-confidence, ability to make decisions and ability to cooperate. 10 Servant Leadership Principles Robert K. Greenleaf proposed 10 Servant Leadership Principles. Larry C. Spears, past president of the Robert K. Greenleaf Center for Servant Leadership, lays down these 10 principles as follows. Listening, it is critical to thoroughly listen to team members without interrupting them. Empathy, it is critical that you know your team in order to employ empathic leadership to assist them to flourish. Healing, some team members may be traumatized as a result of prior toxic work situations. Help others achieve a positive work-life balance so they can recover. Self-awareness, a servant leader should be aware of both his or her own talents and flaws. This is to determine how they integrate within the broader team. Persuasion, instead of only using authority, servant leaders may utilize persuasion and influence to get team members to do what they want. Conceptualization, servant leaders must be able to conceive in terms of the broader picture. They may use this to develop strategies for the team and company. Foresight, it is critical to use the things learned in order to develop in the future. Stewardship, this entails leading by example, where team members follow your actions rather than simply doing what you say. Commitment to people's development, you must devote resources and time to assist individuals and teams in their development. Organizational training, development programs, and progress and transformation counseling may all be beneficial. Building community, servant leadership necessitates the development of connections among co-workers. As a consequence, team members develop trust and get more productive. 7 Servant Leadership Traits Servant leadership entails empowering the team and fostering a healthy work atmosphere. But how does it truly appear? Let's look at the 7 servant leadership attributes. Teamwork, the team must always come first. Worker satisfaction, worker satisfaction and collaboration are the driving forces behind the wheel. Adaptability, servant leadership may range from revenue-driven sales workplaces to non-profit companies dedicated to social benefit. Motivation, servant leaders deliver high levels of assistance to their people, which fuels motivation and engagement. Open communication, the team has faith in a leader who can deliver clarity in complicated, changing circumstances. Leadership must value sincerity. Accountability, ownership inspires dedication and purpose. Employees strive toward personal objectives and accept responsibility for the outcomes. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. On my website, projectmanagerig.com, you can get the free templates for your project management needs as well as training based on my 544-page book Project Management for Managers, Program and Project Portfolio Management in Banking. Please see the details below in the description. Traditional leadership versus servant leadership. Servant first leadership is the polar opposite of conventional leadership. Traditional leadership is described as a leadership approach in which the leader is seen as the focal point of the team. Workers are there to help the boss achieve corporate objectives. On the other hand, servant leadership prioritizes the needs of others. The more time and effort you spend in functioning as a support for your staff, the more productive they will be according to this leadership concept. A servant leader is more inclusive. 
He, she must cultivate an inclusive culture among their team members. Inclusive teams enable everyone to develop a feeling of belonging. This provides them with an opportunity to flourish. A servant leader puts more focus on their team than the customer. They prioritize the needs of their teams, but this does not imply that consumers are ignored. Servant leaders are concerned with the team's progress and well-being. As a result, they may develop competent professionals who can provide superior service to clients. They place more focus on ethics. This leadership style has ethical consequences that regular leadership does not have. Servant leaders that act unethically may generate problems for their teams, such as decreasing motivation and development. What constitutes servant leadership in real life? A genuine desire to help others is a quality of successful servant leaders. Additionally, they make decisions with clarity, effectiveness and charisma. Here are a few real-world instances of servant leadership. Setting an example, being humble, authentic and trustworthy. Your leadership must be built on a foundation of humility. Your subordinates will obey you if you talk with arrogance and dominance out of fear. Instead, you should provide a trustworthy and authentic example with your words and deeds, demonstrating the importance of the work, purpose and awareness. Each component of a clock mechanism is critical. The same is true for every team. Every member of the team is critical to the team's success. Making certain that this message reaches workers might boost their motivation. It may also improve their performance. One method to do this is to express clearly the downstream effect of their effort. You can demonstrate the effect both within and outside the firm. Talk about the individual or persons who will utilize and expand on what they have done rather than the figures and measurements. Always connect their particular accomplishments to the larger company objectives. This encourages a stronger connection to the company's objective. Most crucial, acknowledge their excellent work. Encourage teamwork, community building and dedication. You are the engine that produces a feeling of community and collaboration as a servant leader. Encourage employee commitment to one another to boost teamwork. You may also persuade them to delegate authority. Finally, team members may be included in decision-making procedures. For example, inquire about what they would want to perform on the new project. Or you can ask how they believe they can bring value to their job. The trick is to remain patient and take your time. In today's hectic society, it might be quite tempting to simply navigate through the day, supporting the growth and development of the team, forethought and ingenuity. Recognizing and forecasting staff needs is an important component of the servant leader's duty. When allocating project obligations to every team member, for example, make sure you give the required resources or the capacity to get them. If you act with a service-first approach, you will actually empower people to do their jobs, caring for team members, compassion and empathy. Likewise, the servant leader should foster a welcoming workplace. Employees should feel at ease in this setting. They should not feel threatened if they raise particular issues or inquire. For example, if a person brings to you a grievance about a colleague, you should investigate it. You take a moment to assist them in working through the dispute and eventually resolving it. You are sympathetic, requesting feedback, listening abilities, encourage an adequate degree of interaction with the workers that encourages active and careful listening. A servant leader routinely asks questions freely and follows it up not simply when something is wrong. They listen to input rather than simply giving it. How to be a servant first leader? Improve your communication abilities. The philosophy of servant leadership is based on getting the best from your team. To accomplish so, you must be able to properly articulate corporate goals and purposes. Communication isn't just about what you say. This leadership style is based on listening to your team members' perspectives. To really comprehend their decision-making process, practice active listening. Be more empathic. In a leadership position, empathy is essential. It is particularly critical in servant leadership. Empathy is the ability to put oneself in the shoes of another. It permits you to view things through their eyes. If you want to be a transformative leader, you must exercise this ability. Improve your self-awareness. Charismatic leaders could be appealing and excellent communicators. Increasing your self-awareness entails paying attention to how you behave and what you say, as well as the influence it has on people around you. 
This includes identifying when your behaviors do not match your ideal picture of yourself and charting a clear course of action to correct this. Learn to utilize your power for good. Being a great leader requires the use of persuasion. It involves being able to persuade people that your way of thinking is correct. This ability may be seen as a somewhat different leadership style than servant leadership. As a servant leader, though, there is room for persuasion. Here's an illustration. If your team is split on a problem, you may have to use your persuasion and influence abilities to reach a consensus. Learn to put others first. An authoritarian leader is mainly concerned with himself or herself. That is the polar opposite of servant leadership. It is critical to cultivate selflessness in order to be a good leader. This indicates that you prioritize the aims and wellness of others above your own. Of course, there is a line to be drawn. You must still care for your own self. This will promote employee engagement, which has been shown to raise the performance of employees by up to 73%. Remember the organization's objectives. prioritized, this is still true. Therefore, it's crucial to keep these objectives in mind. Keep your focus on these goals and don't allow anybody else's interests to cause you to stray from them. The team has to be led toward a choice that is sensible in light of the company's goal. Learn how to holistically grow people. The conventional definition of management is getting work done for people, but real management is developing people through work. Various leadership styles use different methods for staff development. The objective is usually to increase staff efficiency and production. This is true whether the leader is democratic or despotic. In the servant leadership approach, productivity and efficiency are still vital, but it's just as important to train each member of the team so they may grow. Decision-making abilities, communication abilities, the ability to consider the big picture, improve team skills by making your direct reports more holistic. It may also boost staff engagement. Engagement is beneficial not just from their standpoint, but also from your company's perspective. Simply assessing employee engagement has been found to enhance earnings by up to 24%. Click on the video card on the right to understand project management milestones and their importance. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. On my website, projectmanagerig.com, you can get the free templates for your project management needs as well as training based on my 544-page book Project Management for Managers. Program and Project Portfolio Management in Banking translated into 12 languages and counting. Please see the details below in the description and where to buy my book and what is the best program and project management software, PPM.